All right, in this video, I want to do a brief comparison between OpenAI Codex, Cloud Code, and Werp AI. For this video, we'll do these four use cases. And the first one is explaining the current project and telling me the technologies used. And then we'll ask them to explain what can be improved in the code and we'll tell it to tell us the solutions and explanations. Then the third one is how can you start the project? And lastly, we'll test them by asking them to build a landing page for this application. So let's start with Codex. Actually, we can do it at the same time for all of them. Cloud Code and OpenAI Codex proceeds directly to, ex to executing the command. But what I like about Warp AI is that it asks you to it asks you if you want to create a plan or if you want to proceed without a plan. In this case, we'll proceed without a plan. Cloud Code is already done, so let's see what it did. This is a learning platform for online courses built with a modern full stack architecture. Front end, it uses React 19 with TypeScript, 10, 10 stack router for routing, 10 stack query for data fetching, Tailwind CS, CSS v4, tip tap editor, vit, and ban. So far, so good. And then on the back end, Hono, ban, PostgreSQL, better auth, Zot, Pino, Resend, and Polar. Again, very well. And let's see what it says about the features. So user roles, course management with chapters and lessons, progress tracking for students, payment, payment integration via Polar, rich text editing, and email verification and notifications. So the platform follows a monorepo structure with separate client server apps. Let's see if there is something else. Nope. Uses modern TypeScript throughout and implements a comp comprehensive course delivery system with user management and progress tracking. Okay. This one was really good. Let's see what Codex did. Okay. I can already say that I don't really like the output of Codex, so let's make this bigger. Okay, hi Catalin, here is a quick high-level overview of the repo, its structure and the main technology technologies it uses. Mono repo layout, at the top le level you have Docker file for contain containerizing both client and the server, the workflow, two working directories, the client for the front-end app and the server for the back-end, and then it shows me the Docker content, then the GitHub actions, yeah, so all I can say is that I don't like this output, it's very different to what I asked. Let's now look at Warp AI, and as you can see, it shows the steps it takes after you give the command. So here it says that it analyzed the project and configuration files by running this command, and then it ran a few more, like reading the package.json for, uh, from both the server and client. And here you can see the output. So based on the analysis of the project structure and package files, blah, blah, blah. This is a modern full stack web application with a clear separation between front end and back end. And as you can see, it, it adds more context about the technology. So build with the band runtime and TypeScript, uses Hono.js as the web framework, Prisma as the ORM for database management, includes authentication, uses over validation and open API integration, email functionality through resend and react email, logging with Pino. The same thing uh, for the front end. And as you can see, it's way more thorough than the cloud code and open AI codex. Sorry for the confusion. Here it's open AI codex and cloud code, my bad. And then it also talks about the developer development environment. And once again, uh, it explains that this project is a modern, well-structured learning platform with a robust tech stack and so on. So far, I like the output from Warp AI. It's straight to the point and it's way more thorough than the other ones. And then on the second place is Cloud Code. I like its output as well, even though it's um, shorter. And on the last place is OpenAI Codex. I really, I think it does way too much. So let's jump to the next use case. What can be improved in the code? Give me solutions and explanations. Warp AI finished first. So let's wait for the others. Okay, Cloud Code is done as well. And Codex is still thinking. What I like about Warp AI and Code is that it shows you what they do. So as you can see here, it kept showing what it what it's doing. The same for Warp, but Codex doesn't show it. All right, let's compare the output from Warp AI and Cloud Code. So we have some suggestions on security, like missing input validation and sanitization, tip tap editor content needs XSS protection, course lesson content stored as raw string without sanitization, need to implement DOM purifier similar for each text content. Very uh, valid feedback. This is what I plan on doing anyway. Authentication authorization, no role-based access control, middleware visible in routes, missing permission checks for course lesson access, need to verify users can only edit their content. Not so good because it already does that. Then we have something related architecture and code organization, mixed concerns in route files, separate controller services and validators, 
I don't think it applies here. Shared types and validation, client and server have separate type definitions. Should use shared schemas from server and client. Such schemas not probably shared between client and server. This more or less makes sense, but there are some issues uh, with this. So, and then we have databases and performance, missing indexes, then testing, yeah, there is no testing. We need to add that. Error handling, I need to improve that. Accessibility and UX. This is valid, this not so much because there are loading screens, type safety, and a lot of stuff. We can say that it's really good feedback. I can agree with most of it, and it did a really good job. Let's look at Werp. Werp again shows what it did, what it analyzed, so it's really cool. And the first thing we can see about Werp is that it also gives you solutions. It doesn't implement anything because I didn't ask it to do it, but it gives you examples, which is really good. Error handling and logging, fully valid. Uh, I need to improve that, and it's on my to-do list. And then we have response structure standardization, True as well. Some return plain strings, other returns objects. Very valid. I need to improve that. Code duplication in database queries. That's true as well, but it doesn't bother me now. Middleware. Middleware checks are repeated in routes. Mm. Input validation. Yeah, this is a good one as well. Business logic separation. This, this is true as well. And like I said, you can see that it gives you a few examples, which is really good to understand what it means. Uh, Claude doesn't do it as far as I've seen. Yep no examples and then we have constants and configurations true that needs to be done as well type safety testing considerations i need to add testing api documentation as well so we have 10 really good suggestions cloud code gave us 13 suggestions but only simple uh, bullet points not examples or anything concrete so i'd say uh, work takes the win in this case i really like that it tells you what it needs to be improved and it gives you examples to understand it and as you can see, Codex still didn't finish, and I don't think I'll wait because I'm afraid it will bankrupt me. So let's interrupt it. It says that I have 99% context left, so I don't know what's wrong. Let's see the next use case. Notes. How can I start the project? This one should be really easy, so let's see how they do. Claude wants to run a bash command, so let's see. List. Yep, the files. Okay. Don't ask again. Warp finished very, very fast, as you can see here. Cloud finished as well. And Codex from OpenAI, it's again very slow. So let's start with Cloud. To start the project, follow these steps. Start the database. This is very good. Set up the server. Very good as well. The client. True. Very good. And then you also have a quick start summary that explains you what all of this does. The server should run on localhost 3000 and the client will likely run on, on a different port. Okay, I don't really like this uh, output because this is not where the server runs and it should tell you where the client, the port of the client. This note is also really good. Okay, now let's see Warp. Oops. So as you can see that it shows you all the steps it took and then it, it tells you what are the prerequisites, like make sure you have BAN installed, which is fair enough. A database and then how to set it up. Install the dependencies for both server and the client. CD into server install. Install client dependencies, same thing, really good. Server setup. Create the environment variable. Yeah, yeah, it's good, but it's missing some stuff, which is understandable. Claude missed it as well because I don't have an example environment file. And then you have here the instructions for the Prisma. Generate the client, run database migrations, see the database optional, and start the server in development mode. Then you have the client setup, and you have the requi required environment variables. It tells you where to access the application. So this one got it right, at least the front end. It shows you where the client application is, like the port, and then the backend API, uh, we run on a different port. It should say what port. Additional development tools, you can, you can use BAN run Prisma Studio in the server directory to view and edit the database, and lint to check the code style and lint fix to fix the linting issues okay this is really good i would say it's more comprehensive than the cloud code and let's see codex uh okay let's see this one start the database okay run the backend i'm not even using npm for this project so this is already failing i mean not failing but it's not the right com not the right commands Mm, it got the port right for the server and it got the package manager right for the client at least 
oh, this one is good. Uh, Open AI Codex managed to understand, to show the ports for both the client and the server. Yeah, so I still think this takes the third place. Open AI Codex, Cloud Code takes the second place and Warp AI takes the first place. Uh, I really like its comprehensiveness, if that's a, a word. Okay, and the last use case is building a landing page for the application. This is more uh, complex and let's see how it fares. So build a landing page for the application. It should highlight the benefits of using the app and its features for people who want to monetize their knowledge. Okay, let's see. You first and then Cloud Code and then Warp AI. Okay, it seems that they finished. Once again, Warp AI finished first and Cloud Code second and OpenAI Codex last. So this time let's start with OpenAI Codex. And I think we'll have an issue because they all made the changes on the same code base. So I think we should have done it separately. Unfortunately, I think I have to redo the test because I didn't think about it. But now I realize that they made the change on the same code, ba code base. So let's do it again. Let me um, wipe all the changes. Okay, let's restart with Codex first. Okay, it seems that Codex finished the landing page. So let's see how it looks. Hmm. I, I'd say it's not the best landing page I've ever seen, but that's just me. So yeah, that's all. I think it's fair to say that it didn't do a very good job. So let's try Cloud Code now. Okay, Cloud Code finished the landing page as well. So I'm really curious to see how it looks. This is the result from Cloud Code. and we can already see that it's a million times better. We have a title, a paragraph, buttons, numbers, uh, cards, and a lot more sections. For some reason, all of them, at, at least until now, Codex and Cloud Code, they build the landing page in the root page, but that's a minor thing. So far, I feel like Codex is going to be on the third place as well. This looks really good. I mean, from a single prompt. So let's see what Warp can do. Okay, it seems that Warp finished the landing page as well. So let's test it. First of all, we can see that uh, Warp didn't change the home page. So that's really good. And it added this link in the nav bar. Let's see if it works. And yes, as you can see, it's a new page at slash landing. So we have a simple hero page, some cards, a new section, another section, success stories, uh, some numbers. Yep, really good one as well. So comparing these landing pages, I'd say that Cloud Code and Warp AI built the best landing pages. Cloud Code was aware of the design of the project, Warp AI as well, but a little bit less. And I'd say the Cloud Code and Warp AI did a really good job and OpenAI Codex failed again. I mean, not really failed. I'm a bit harsh, but I didn't really like its output. So let's look back over the test cases. The first one was explaining the current project and the technologies used. Warp AI and Cloud Code did the best and I place Warp on the first place here. The second one, what can be improved in the code uh, and giving solutions and explanations. Again, I'd say Warp AI did the best and then Cloud Code and then OpenAI Codex. How can I start the project? Here, I'd still say that Warp did the best, followed by Cloud Code and OpenAI Codex. And for the last challenge, I'd say that Cloud Code created the best landing page, followed by Warp AI, and then followed by OpenAI Codex. I also want to mention that I used the default models. I didn't change anything. So in uh, Warp AI, it's the auto model, which they say is the best model for the task. Cloud Code, I assume, uses uh, Cloud 4. And OpenAI Codex, I have no idea what's the, their default model. So I'm a big fan of Warp AI, and this is the tool I use every day, both at work and personally. So yeah, I'll personally continue using Warp AI. I'm really not a fan of Codex. I'm not trying to throw mud or something. It's my honest opinion. And Cloud Code is really good, uh, almost as good as Warp AI. So I'll continue using these two, and mostly Warp. 
Uh, and yeah, this is my comparison. I hope you like it and let me know what you think in the comments.